Hey guys, this is Mike here from Ecom Knives, and today I wanted to tell you about a tip I kind of figured out. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's done this, but if you're making knives and you want to make a bunch of the same model, you're going to want to keep a copy of it. Now, the way I make a knife is I draw it on paper, and then I literally take that drawing, cut it out, and glue it to a piece of steel. Uh, the only problem with that is, yeah, it's accurate to the drawing. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but now how do I replicate it? I'd have to draw it all over again and there's no guarantees. I'm not doing anything in CAD. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry guys. I'm getting over a cold. So, what can we do? What can we do to keep it? I mean, you could certainly just keep a blank for yourself, you know, but then you got that expensive steel just sitting there rusting away for just as a template I mean, in the grand scheme of things is it that big of a deal no not really but I wanted to use everything I got because all my money is tied up in everything you see around you here so now I gotta start recouping some of it so I'll show you the designs and then I'll show you what I did uh, to replicate them so the very first one, if you go back a few, uh, maybe two videos ago, I told you about uh, I was going back to my roots and going back to one of my very uh, first designs. Well, I have a few of them right here. This is the updated design. These are hollow ground. And these are all done freehand. They're very rough ground and they don't have holes or handles or anything. They're very far from done. Uh, but they won't look this rough. They'll be nice and shiny when they come back and I shine them up from the heat treat place. But these are pre-heat treat. Now, I said I wanted to make a bunch of them so I could work on my consistency because I do everything freehand so it's all muscle memory. So, that's exactly what I did. I got, put them in a way that you could see them. All freehand and they're all pretty much even. You can see that blue dye is uh, layout fluid. It's just so I could see where I'm grinding. So I'll take two of the ones that I cleaned up already and put them side by side. You can see I got them pretty close. You know, not bad for freehand on a beginner. So that's one of the designs that I'm going to replicate is that one. I have to figure out a name for that one. Another one, and for some reason I, I don't really understand it to be honest with you, but there is a big uh, cleaver craze going on right now. Uh, why everybody likes cleavers for some reason. Uh, but if that's what you like and you want me to make one, alright. You know? So, I made my version of the cleaver. This one is taking some hints from an actual cleaver and straight razors. And this is what I came up with. See, they're nice big blades. These are all about eight inches long, eight and a half inches or so. It's a little thinner here, and then it fattens up towards the, well, fattens up towards the tip. This is also hollow ground, so you get that nice um, concave area in the nose. It'll be more pronounced when they're finished ground. And of course, these are rough ground too. And just in case, I cut out four of these too. So, and the same deal. I'm working on consistency, and it looks like I'm doing okay. So, I'm very happy about that. The grind lines are stopping where I want them to stop. And if you're a new knife maker, you know how hard that is. Because, I'll tell you what, if you're not a knife maker, I'll explain it to you really quick. When you first start out, you plan on stopping your line here. But it never ever happens that way. It always ends up way up here, you overshoot, you go right off the spine, and then the knife's ruined. And it takes quite a few knives to, to get used to stopping where you want to stop. But, it's working. It's working so far so good, right? Uh, one more design, this one's a, a flat grind. Um, eh, I'm not terribly thrilled with it, but it's still good. I like it. It'll be uh, much nicer when it's done. I'm going to bring the grind up a little bit. Maybe bring that swedge back a little bit. 
But okay, those are all the designs. So how am I going to keep them? Is I went to Home Depot and I bought a piece of plexiglass. Right? Here's the leftovers right here. It's point nine something, nine eight thick or whatever it is. And this sheet was five bucks. Not bad, right? So I take the knife and I clamp it down. I'll show you on the clear it's probably the easiest. You take the knife and you clamp it to the plexiglass. And then you take a scribe and scratch a line around it. There we go, now we're lined up. See? You take a scribe and you scratch a line all around it. And then you cut it out on either a wood cutting bandsaw. I did it on a wood cutting bandsaw and it worked just it worked fine. Uh, you could do it on a metal cutting bandsaw. You could even do it with a Dremel if you have a steady hand. Uh, and then you just sand it a little bit until you get the shape you want. And it's not 100% perfect, but at least now I have the, the general dimensions of what I was aiming for. You know, so we got, I made one of each. And once I drill the holes in the handles, uh, for the handles that I still have to do, um, I'll drill the exact same holes in the templates so next time I could just clamp this to a piece of steel and take a scribe, one of these things, these it scores metal, and you just follow around the outside, you know, so scribe it like this. And then I could cut that out and bam, then I have the same exact uh, profile as all the other ones. So that's my little tip, five bucks worth of plexiglass, and now you have templates, and you can see through them, so that's a plus two, so you can see if you moved while you were clamped on the steel. So, yep, five bucks worth of plexiglass and some time on, a, on some kind of saw, and you got your templates ready for the next batch. But Alright guys, this is Mike from Ecom Knives, and I'll catch you on the next video.